everyone, it's Raina. So this is a video for the new moon in Sagittarius, which is occurring on December 18th. And depending on where you live, it will be either uh, early morning or even uh, very late on the 17th. And let me get out my computer because I want to tell you the exact time if that matters to you. Uh, let's see. So it's at, in my time of uh, Central Standard Time in the United States, it's 12.31 a.m. So we're talking about right after midnight, and if you're in Europe, you're going to be waking up to it and dealing with it then. Australia, I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're, it'll probably be very late at night or or later in the evening. So the thing about this new moon is that in Sagittarius we're talking about a sign that is ruled by Jupiter and I recently did a video about Jupiter going into Scorpio and this was right before all of the things came out about the sexual scandals. And as I record this, which happens to be December 8th, we are going through another wave of it. Now, it's been coming out all along, but it just seems like there are new developments, and some of these situations, or maybe the vast majority of them, have been on the mild side. And I want to make it very clear that I am not brushing off minimizing people's experiences with any kind of um, harassment, uh, whether it be sexual or otherwise. And yet there have been people that have been stepping down and debate over whether it was something that rose to the occasion of needing to quit their like political position or what have you. There is a theory that, well, some people think this is all a distraction for other things that are going on. And that's, you know, one possible theory. But there's another theory that this is prepping the sheeple, the people who are still in the matrix, who turn on the news every night and they believe everything they hear on the news, they believe everything they read in the newspapers, that it's prepping them for far worse in terms of what some of their most most beloved uh, holly weird actors or musicians, uh, moguls, politicians have been up to. Things that they could not possibly wrap their brains around at this moment, that they will be more receptive to it, that it would be too much of a shock to go from zero to 80, talking about these kinds of things. And I think that there may be some truth to that because the more that I have been investigating various things that I, I'm not going to get into because of the nature of this particular video, but just um, that are out there, how many dots get connected in terms of some of these goings on that are, I think, it's easy to call them evil. But how many of them are connected? How many people are connected? How many, uh, you know, things in society are all like secretly connected in that way to make these things happen? And it, it almost makes sense because in order to carry out some of these things, they would need that kind of cooperation. So, the sign of Scorpio is a sign of the underbelly and, you know, what is kind of festering underneath the, the very serene, lovely veneer or surface, okay? And people who have a lot of Scorpio in their charts, or in my case, as I just kind of realized, I have, the, my son is in Sagittarius, but my son is in the eighth house. And that's uh, Scorpio's house. And I also have 
my moon in conjunction with Pluto, and that's one of the rulers of Scorpio. So that's like having the moon in Pluto and having this, I mean, having the moon in Scorpio and having the sun in Scorpio in a certain way. And I'm certainly fascinated by this. But in America, because that's all I can speak about, uh, since that's where I live, we have had a year of, you know, maybe it's a little bit of hyperbole, but to me it's insanity with certain people. And this is directly connected to the results of our presidential election and people who still cannot accept the results. And one of the reasons why is because they were told certain things by the mainstream media about polls, polling data, that turned out to be wildly incorrect, and other things that basically seem to be lies to either suppress voter turnout or to keep people in a state of denial. I don't know what it is. But the, the, the fallout from that is that there, those people, it was such a shock to their system, they never expected the results, that they have continued to push back. And this is exactly what this theory about kind of starting off with little scandals first is probably a way to kind of dip their toes in the water to make them capable of handling far more disturbing truths. I don't know, but I do think it's interesting because I did talk about this in my Jupiter uh, in Scorpio video that, that that would be what occurs. And right after that, we were off to the races. And um, Jupiter is an expansive influence. Scorpio is secretive. Jupiter rules Sagittarius and Sagittarius wants the truth. Sagittarius demands the truth in life. Rules the ninth house, philosophy, the God house, ethics having a moral backbone. And I want to talk about this because I want to give you some um, ideas for seeds of intention that you might want to plant at the time of the new moon. And the late Jan Spiller has a book called New Moon Astrology that goes into each sign. And I'm just grabbing this book. And they have like kind of the keywords or the, the things that each sign represents that you can craft your own in, intentions to co-create the reality that you want. And, you know, I want to say something about co-creation, law of attraction, things like that. I don't even necessarily think you have to believe in new moon energy or law of attraction or any of that. All you have to do is want these things. If you can be the kind of person that is live and let live, and it's like, you know what? I don't know if this is true. I don't know if this is just a bunch of hooey, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I might as well. Why not? It's not going to hurt me to kind of um, set in some intentions for my life. Maybe you can just do it from the standpoint of uh, resolutions that you want to enact, whether it be in December or for 2018 that go along the lines of some of these things. So what she talks about, I'm going to give, I'm just going to read uh, from her list of what Sagittarius represents. Quest for truth, that was the first one. Peace of mind, which I think is kind of interesting um, because it's um, the peace of mind with Sagittarius. I, I I mean, hey, I think positivity, but uh, I don't know about peace of mind. Of course, we all want peace of mind. Travel, freedom, adventure, ninth house, long distance travel, legal issues, faith, optimism, finding solutions, overcoming excess. Because Jupiter, again, this expansive energy in the, in the challenging part of it, it can be being self-indulgent. I think of the nine of cups in the tarot this uh, person kind of being a glutton. And, and it's like, 
you don't want to deny yourself things, but by the same token, you don't want to overdo it. So you have to kind of like the middle uh, way in Buddhism. So let me delve deeper into this. Okay, well this is interesting because one thing that Jan says is talking about with freedom and talking about this foreign travel and adventure is spontaneity. And actually with spontaneity, I would also add the, because she has about the quest for truth and she says religion, prayer and higher, higher guidance, places of worship, frankness and honesty and direct communication. See, I would link that with spontaneity in the sense that people who are living inauthentic lives oftentimes find it hard to be spontaneous and authentic. Uh, well, if you're living an inauthentic life, that would make sense. Um, adults are expected to be very sober and take themselves very seriously. And spontaneity is associated with being a child. A child just drops whatever they're doing and they just do something on a whim. But an adult is considered irresponsible if they do that. A lot of times, Sagittarians and other fire signs, the other fire signs are Leo and Aries, and I would say especially with Aries because they're, uh, they tend to be very um, uh, rash or impatient to do something, so they'll just do it. Um, they get branded with that as well. And if you are, if you have a lot of fire energy within you or you simply resonate with that way of living and yet you feel this sting from people around you who kind of are disapproving and think that you are being very irresponsible, there comes a time when you have to, one, face yourself and say, whose life is it anyway? And, you know, is it really, do I really care if somebody disapproves of me? And if so, why do I? Why do I feel this need to go along with what other people want me to do? Is people pleasing above my own personal happiness? Happiness. But the other thing is that when we are spontaneous, we are being, we are also being very genuine. And I was thinking about this, knowing I was making this video, I wanted to just bring up to you the idea of little white lies. Okay, because they uh, Jan talks about direct communication, frankness, and honesty. But people still promote this idea. I mean, even when you have um, advice columnists and stuff like that, people seem to think that it's okay to do very small lies because they're, it's just like mundane matters. And besides, you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. And so an example would be, Someone asks you, your friend asks you if you want to go to the movies and you really just are not feeling like socializing with anyone, even your best friend. And instead of just saying that, you say, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't. I have to go and pick up my grandmother from the airport. <laughs> Some kind of like little silly lie. And... There, to me, a white lie is no different than a big lie. Because what you're doing, there's two things that you're doing that are wrong. First of all, you have such little faith in your friend that you think that they can't handle being turned down for something that they're offering. And that they are so thin-skinned that they will automatically think it's a diss. And also, that you are lowering yourself. It's almost like I would say immature to lie as an adult. Sometimes when you're a kid, you lie out of a sense of survival because you know that you have an, if you have an abusive parent, they could um, very easily punish the child in a severe way for admitting something. You know, that's one of the, the worst things about being an authoritarian parent is that they breed the very kinds of dysfunctional behavior that they supposedly want to eradicate. 
because the child feels like they have to protect themselves. So looking at it from that standpoint, if you are a grown, okay, I'll say it, a grown ass man or woman, and you are feeling compelled to lie to other people, then you have to look in the mirror and ask yourself why. Why do you feel that way? Why are you afraid of somebody else's disapproval, disappointment? Um, people need to feel disappointment sometimes. You know, it's okay, they're going to live. And the thing is that you are respecting them enough to be completely honest with them. There's nothing wrong with saying, oh man, you know, I love you, but I just don't feel like it tonight. I feel like just staying at home, you know, under the covers and just reading a good book. There's nothing insulting about that. So that's something to consider. If you have a tendency to do that, you're giving away your power really is what it boils down to because you feel compelled to do something that is dishonest in order to keep people from being mad at you. And if you're fearless, that's going to be the last thing on your mind. Now, um, it was interesting, I never, I'm going to still have to get a handle on this thing about lawsuits and court proceedings because the seventh house, which Libra uh, represents, and you know, of course, Libra is the scales, the scales of justice, I, I still have not figured out what the difference is between the seventh and ninth houses when it comes to the law. Now, it could be that the ninth house is like uh, you know, it's like organized religion where it's the law itself and the seventh house is more of the mundane events of that. But uh, Jane Spiller has under this category attorneys, lawsuits, ethics, morality, conscience, and court proceedings. So, I mean, that's like the mundane events. So I still haven't figured that one out. But I'll just say about, about that uh, arena, a lot of people come into contact with law uh, suits or more likely like divorces, uh, inheritance issues, and they might have to hire a lawyer and they might have to, you know, testify, whatever the case may be. And my thing to you is how do you feel about what the outcome is. Do you need to win? Because sometimes all of this can be avoided and you can just say, you know what, I'm not going to pursue it. But a lot of times people get hooked into their sense of righteous indignation. How dare they? Um, they're taking my money. That's my money. That's rightfully mine. And I can't let them do that. And sometimes they'll be consumed with it and they'll lose their peace of mind. They may spend a lot of money on lawyers so that even if they win the case, they hardly have a judgment. I mean, the money isn't really all that much that they've won, if anything. And so it seems that it just creates a lot of disruption in people's lives. I'm not saying that, that across the board. I'm just saying that it's something to consider if there is a possible uh, different recourse that you could avoid some of these things. Okay, and another thing is, it says that Sagittarius rules carelessness, okay? Shortcuts, self-righteousness, making assumptions, ex excesses, extravagance, blunt communication, and Pollyanna approaches. Now, as for self-righteousness, I think it's kind of a weird place to put shortcuts. But I just want to talk about that because Sagittarians do get accused of being preachy. And there is that, you know, the shadow side can be a sort of spiritual arrogance where you think that you're better than other people. And of course, this is not just applicable to Sagittarians. All people have the, have the capacity for being arrogant and, you know, smug on a high horse and things like that. And so if you know, know that you have that tendency, look at it. Try to, when, when you're in a situation where somebody is either telling you something 
and you normally would just jump in and give your little spiel, listen to them all the way without saying anything and maybe ask questions instead of um, moralizing, pontificating. And that other person is going to feel heard a lot more than even if you are considered a wise person, somebody that people go to as a sounding board. It doesn't hurt to become more and more of a listener and, you know, keeping it open-ended because it may seem like a slam dunk in certain cases, people telling you certain things, but you haven't lived their life. And so what's true for you is not necessarily what they have experienced. And so that never hurts to be less of a, um, a type of person who comes across in a preachy way. Bluntness. Now, honest communication, straightforward communications, yes. Bluntness is carelessness because the person isn't thinking how their words are going to impact another person. Okay, hey, I know I've been there. But the thing with me is I know that I'm not someone who is malicious. And I hope that the other person, when they get their feathers ruffled, that they can sense that about me, that even if I'm too blunt at times and I um, just talk about the unvarnished truth and it's a little bit too bare, it needs a little bit of um, padding in order to be well received, that at least, even if they are mad at me, that they can accept that I'm not uh, a mean-spirited person, that I'm not trying to demean them in any way and make them feel small. So the same thing, um, being too, too blunt, and there's another term that I was thinking of that I can't think of at the moment. Um, Not diplomatic, okay? And I think that personally, just think, you know, that's all I can do is talk about myself, not as a narcissist, but as just telling my own story, is that I think I've gotten better because I've realized how important it is. And just thinking about how I feel when I receive messages and being very sensitive myself, that it's always a good idea to put things as, as uh, kindly, gently as you can, while still being direct. You can do both. Now, they also talk about being a Pollyanna, and that's, Sagittarians are very positive, and this energy, this new moon energy, I think that would be one, one of your resolutions, maybe, or your intentions, if you have a negative mindset a lot of times, is to learn how to flip the script and see things in a more positive way. Have more gratitude, have more generosity um, in life, towards life, and stop nitpicking your life. But the Pollyanna thing is such a cop-out where people will just say some kind of cliche and try to either change the subject or just not even deal with it in a substantial way because they don't want to really own up to whatever's going on. And that kind of thing is really, I think, offensive to people who are suffering because they want to think that their friends and family really care about them at a deeper level than that. And to just, it's almost like being dismissive. You know, to saying, well, um, there's, there's a reason for everything. Um, everything happens for a reason. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess I should shut up, right? I mean, that's kind of the, the, um, what the implication is. So thinking about that and thinking about, like, balancing out a, an acknowledgement of somebody's pain with, you know, telling them, that there may be a higher purpose for this. You can do both. You don't have to just say these cliches and then move on. 
Now I just pulled up the chart again. I wanted to see uh, we have a lot of Sagittarius energy, Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, but Mars is in Scorpio. And the reason that this is so important is that Mars and Scorpio is that detective really ferreting out information and not, you know, it's almost like an obsession of not wanting to stop until they get to the truth. So we could be looking at a whole new scenario by the time the, the new moon actually comes about. As I said, I'm doing this video 10 days ahead of time. So I just wanted to look at it from an energy update standpoint because there does seem to be a lot of people putting their cards on the table and uh, full dis disclosure, but I don't think it is full disclosure yet. I think we're still um, getting to that point. We're kind of like um, flirting at the edges and whatever happens, understand that it is divine timing, that it's here you have to accept truth. That's the other thing. If you push truth away, that's called denial. And um, there's so much talk about fake news that people feel like they don't know who is on the side of the angels and who is part of more of the deception. And I can't, I'm not going to give you like names and things like that because people can easily use that as fodder for uh, arguing with me that I'm, you know, I have a certain political viewpoint or lifestyle perspective. And so I'm not going to do that. But I will say that um, your heart will tell you if something is true or not. And the, the difference between just... Um, wanting something to be true in your intuition or your gut or your heart space is that sometimes it's resonating but it doesn't necessarily make you happy. You may feel sorrow over something finally kicking in and you understanding exactly what's been happening. It can feel horrifying but it still feels like it's the truth. So I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to pick a few cards for the situation because I think that it requires full uh, more understanding of what we're facing here. Uh, the Galactic Center is uh, in play at this new moon. The new moon is at 26 Sagittarius. The Galactic Center is 27 Sagittarius. So you do the math, almost an exact conjunction. And the womb, you know, uh, this, the womb that birthed all of us physical beings. Are we seeing that we are creating a new earth? And how does that feel? Does it feel scary? Does it feel like it's too much? It's all too much, like George Harrison said. Um, I don't know. It's just something to consider. So... Without further ado, I'm going to pick a card from my Akashic Tarot deck that I just got. It's funny, somebody said to me, please don't do oracle cards, just do the tarot, okay? And um, I'm not like a big oracle card person. This is supposed to be the tarot, though, believe it or not. That's why I ordered it. And it doesn't have the, the same amount of cards, nor does it have the same definitions. However, it is a divination tool, so what the heck? Let's go with the flow. And uh, I think I'll also pick maybe a Keepers of Light. That's one of my favorite decks. I'll just pick two. I've already almost gotten to the 30 minute mark. Okay, interesting. Queen of Forces. Now, <laughs> that looks like the, you know, the new moon and the full moon. Very interesting. Now, this could be this uh, cycle that we've had in December. The full moon in 
Gemini and this new moon in Sagittarius. Okay, where's my Keeper's of the Light? I'm not even going to shuffle. I'm just going to pick the top card. I'm going to leave them in the deck. Interesting. Kali Ma. Facing fear. Major spiritual changes are unfolding. This is your chance to soar. Well, you know, that's great because usually I shuffle these, these cards and I get the same ones over and over again. I don't think I've ever gotten that one before. So that is way cool. I don't like the shadow that's creating. So I'll put this over here. Okay, so let's look at these cards. Where is Kali Ma, though? What happened to Kali Ma? Queen of Forces. This card shows a woman balancing the energies of a sun in one hand and a moon in the other with a river flowing beneath her feet. The Queen of Forces represents a woman who can help to bring greater balance to your life. She brings an unusual combination of power and peace, creativity and receptivity in both her energy and her support. Sometimes this card can represent a person in your life, either you or another, coming into a phase of great power and an ability to sustain it with wonderful results. There is a gift of grace and serene understanding when this card is upright. It also brings new roles and opportunities. Careers in many of the sciences, global communication, nature, and energy may now be available to you. The Queen of Forces could also indicate the appearance of a possible love interest or an associate in business or in a creative project who has powerful influence and connections for you or for another. It may be someone you know or somebody new, but when this card appears, there's a tender yet powerful support. During this time, choose to support yourself as well. You hold the forces of the sun activity and the moon receptivity, and only you yourself can direct the energy of your eternal life. Now, speaking of those two energies, the yin and the yang, you know, the the sun representing the, or I don't know, did they say, was that the sun? I, I, I didn't remember, but it was like one was supposed to be outer. Yeah, that was the sun. Why did I think it was the, the new moon and the full moon? Oh boy. But anyway, um, that's the, the balance that we have in, in life is balancing the outer and the inner. When somebody is too much in the outer, they are um, too active. They are too outside of themselves. Always talking, always um, associating with other people on a surface level where there's a lot of, so, you know, just socializing and not being contemplative enough. And there, you know, that's true of people who are very extroverted is that they tend to be very good at interacting with people and they have those skills, but they may lack an ability to really get in touch with their inner power and their higher self in a way. They, they are not those kinds of interior people. And as a result, they can tend to be a little bit too um, like human doings instead of human beings and not and maybe not making good decisions sometimes because they're not learning from their mistakes they're not reflecting they're just like doing something else they live their lives to just take this action take that action on the other hand you have people that are very internal and they're very like they might be introverts they might enjoy being alone a lot but they might be too self-absorbed where they are too subjective they look at life just totally 
based on their own experiences and cannot see the bigger picture sometimes. So it can create this real lack of an open-mindedness, a tendency to just be reactive, see everything through their conditioned lens. So it is very important in all of our things to have that balance. And the male and female energy, the sun and the, the, the moon, being able to be receptive and quiet and not always be on the go, as well as having that kind of force field that, you know, that power that is externalized. I mean, that's good too, you know, it's not, that's not bad. So a combination to have being self-empowered, feeling like you can do things. That's, that's wonderful. Now let me read. Okay. I already read this. I said, I'll read it again. Kali Ma facing fear. Major spiritual changes are unfolding. This is your chance to soar. And these things that were, that I was talking about earlier, they are spiritual. Um, when you get right down to it, they are helping us to become more understanding of the difference of what it means to be fallen when somebody is deeply rooted in sin. And I don't usually use the word sin because it's, you know, it's such an old timey religious kind of a word, but it is something, it's ignorance. And the ignorance is thinking that you can gain power by violating somebody else in any way. And that's really what the sexual uh, situation is. It's a violation of power. And with Scorpio, that's one of the shadow aspects is this, um, and, and underlying this uh, sexual thing is the quest for power. And the only power that you have is over yourself. Kalima is the Hindu goddess of death and rebirth. <laughs> well, there you go. There, that's Scorpio. That's Pluto. Death and rebirth. She brings old cycles to an end so we can experience transformation. She is a strong, fierce, fiery, and powerful image of the divine feminine. Many have been intimidated by her, but she is a mother energy and therefore completely loving. She is like a fierce mother protecting her child from harm. She has dark energy like the night sky, but it consumes fear and leaves only love. She is a twin flame of the god Shiva and has even and has even been known to slay his ego so that he can reveal his true loving self. This is a time when you are able to look fear in the eye and move away from it. Fear is just an energy and energy can be changed. This can be an intense experience because the human self is so conditioned that it may be used to operating with fear present. When fear is gone, it may feel as though an emptiness is there, but this is space for love and miracles to enter. You're being filled with the courage of spirit now so that you can move from this phase of your life to the next. Trust the process and call on Kali Ma to help you release your fear and step into a space that's strong, focused, and courageous. For us right now, Talking about this energy update, for, for those of us right now navigating through a lot of scandals and the fear that is generated there, because for some people it's triggering them about things in their own life that have happened to them and it brings up bad memories. For other people, it is preconceived notions that are just being shot to hell. And they don't know how to wrap their brains around what is occurring. That's when you look this, this truth squarely in the eye and says, I can, and say, I can handle this. I've got this. And nothing phases you because you know that, you know that this is a temporary world. So you don't have to. Um, believe that everything is perfect about the world. I think a lot of the people that are the most offended are the Pollyannas because they're living kind of in La La Land. And now they're seeing the deep underbelly being exposed. Well, welcome to reality. 
and this is a reality for far too many people that they have suffered um, sometimes silently and they never felt like they had the power I'm not talking about the people that accuse these people I'm talking about people who've gone through you know truly horrendous experiences and they just felt like nobody had their back especially if they were children and they're and you know how how can you as a child um, even know that you have an option to to get away from something like that so I think that we need to embrace more of this and see life as it really is not be afraid that there are that there is darkness to life yin and yang it's it's what makes it's just like what the the energy of Pluto tearing down in order to heal to purify and so here's to purification you guys take care bye